three, two, one. Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. My name is Chenin Nanta Senamad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. So a popular question that is probably crossing the minds of all aspiring data scientists is, how do you land a job or an internship at one of the fan companies? So today we are very fortunate to have someone who has experienced through dozens of interviews and internship at one of the fan companies. And today we have Andrew from Data Leap here with us to share some of his insights, tips, and tricks. So without further ado, we're starting right now. Data Professor, let me start off by saying I am so pleased to be here. Thank you so much for coming onto my channel and talking about your experience becoming a bioinformatics researcher to professor to data science legend on YouTube. If you guys take a second to go over to my channel and check out the interview that we did with Data Professor over there, as well as a video where I outline your first 21 days of data science, outlining exactly what you should do day by day as part of the 66 days of challenge for Kenji, but also as part of your personal $0 data science Bible, I'll happily wait while you go over and make sure to subscribe while you're there. Let me just give it a second. It's about time. Hey, welcome back. In this video, I am going to go over a resume that is tested and true, something that will catch the eye of any recruiter in Silicon Valley, and it will be yours by the end of this video. Over on my channel, I talk about exactly how I'm going to give away 200 copies of the Word document version of this resume. The first 200 people that go over to my channel and watch the two videos where I describe how to get that resume will be able to take that template and start their path into cracking the data science interview in Silicon Valley and start making over six figures starting salary with no experience. If you need a good resume, stay on this video. If you want to start your data science journey in the first three days, three weeks, and three months of the first step to the next part of your life, head on over to my channel and check out that video if you haven't already. I'm sure you already have. Now, without further ado, let's dive into this resume. So you, got, you and I are now looking at the apex of resume templates for data science in Silicon Valley. If you want to have a perfect resume, very clean and very eye-catching to HR, to headhunters, and to senior management, this is the resume for you. At the first sight, you'll see that it's very austere. It is very clean. Uh, you have your data science name in the beginning, you have your data scientist email, and you have your number. Nothing more. Oftentimes, you'll see other types of resumes, artist resumes, business resumes, architecture resumes have completely different designs. Maybe there's a profile picture. Maybe there's a little bit of a blurb about what you do. Cut that all out and get to the meat of the matter. Your education should be the first section. First, you see that the top section has your master's. If you have it, that is a great bonus to make sure you highlight right above. You'll notice that I've cut the GPA out already. That's because you should let your experience speak for itself. People who are often caught in the GPA world oftentimes are pulling punches when it comes to showing off your skills. Recruiters are not interested in this specific industry. So that's an important note to bring home. You see that we have a very small line about exactly what you've done in this program. Now, if you've had honors or scholarships or laurels that you want to highlight, that is perfectly fine. Just make sure that you're highlighting them in a way to make, that makes sense to augment your experience down below. Same thing goes for your bachelor's, your undergraduate, or the previous degree. Bingo bongo, let's head on to the experience section. You'll notice that the very first type of experience is the genuine deal. The best thing that you can possibly put is when you are a staff data scientist at a big famous tech company. Now, we are not all coming from that specific background, but if you have it, Smoke them if you got it. Make sure in these types of sections, you are keeping your accomplishments relevant to the job description. Read the job description, and each time you apply, you should be changing your resume. That will increase your chances, and make sure you're not wasting your time resume dropping for positions that are entirely irrelevant, or even just the slightest bit off the mark. You'll also have to keep your roles with extensive, scalable data science accomplishments in the forefront. You want to make sure that you are highlighting when you have made lasting impact. And that is how you know a good resume leads to a good hire. 
You see here that a couple of the points listed in this section already highlight these two points written in red. We see up top, we took ownership of a backend data pipeline, streamlining data literacy, and consolidated redundancies. Line two, implemented a TensorFlow model regressed on user feedback, reducing DAU DAO churn by 12% for top five products. Third, guided PMs and other cross-functional data decision makers by closing gaps in technical expertise. These three are highlighting how you have not only leveraged your ownership, uh, leveraged your leadership, but also have started growing something more than just your role at the company. You are growing a niche narrative for the type of person that they want to hire. And that person is you. I'll let Data Professor give his thoughts about this section. No questions so far, Andrew. You've done a very good job in explaining this. And so just a short point in note here is that I really like how the resume is providing information about the performance metric, like the key performance indicator or KPI. Senior data analyst, this is the type of position that you want to put second. If you are not quite a data scientist or you are a data science adjacent team member, you want to put these positions second. Ideally, in red you see here, for analyst positions, focus on how you modeled, visualized, and engaged in advanced statistical methods. Here, you want to be able to rise above the other analysts that work ma mainly in Excel and PowerPoint uh, and maybe have never even touched an IDE or a terminal. Here is your chance to make sure that you are uh, capable of making strong technical connections between software engineering teams, design teams, and product teams. You, as a data analyst, are the engaged communicator. And make sure that you are representing yourself as such. Here, we have tested, presented, and pushed a fraud detection model into production, affecting 4.5 million users. That is a great headline for any job. And an analyst that is able to put their finger in that pie would pull a lot of weight in any company. So right underneath this red line here, it says built an enterprise looker visualization solution at scale for cross product owner engagement, increasing data governance activism by 30% and reducing unexpected data warehouse outages by 29% across two years. So you see now that is one of the girthier parts of this resume. It's two full lines and it has a lot of metrics into it. KPIs is an interesting play of very specific and very generic. You want to make sure that the, you are creating wide swaths of change in your organization, but you also want to make sure that someone can look at the change that you have created and then visualize how you would be able to map that change onto their organization. So being specific is key, but also knowing how to lift the weight of this line on the resume is important. Having too many of these will really bog down the importance of a takeaway like this. Right underneath that, you see tracked a core user demographic with Power BI analyzing their spending behavior with propensity score matching. Hey, that is an advanced statistical method for most companies to be able to then tout on your resume. Let's move on to data science experience at smaller companies. Here we have data scientist at smaller scrappier tech.io. For these smaller companies, you want to focus on when you were able to get the attention of senior leadership. This shows that you were not only a go getter, but you also were able to cross the aisle and get the attention of people who made decisions and not only in data governance, not only in creating these data pipelines, but also entire products and entire metrics are measured by these teams who are led by these people. You were in the weeds and that proves a lot. Let's see one example. Presented findings to board of stakeholders on how industry SEO practices increased new user acquisition by 20%. Hey, that is amazing. And that kind of specificity really brings out uh, frontliner in terms of this particular experience. Let's look below the highlighted red line. Discovered underutilized cache of website metadata that ultimately became the driving basis for direction of entire product team under SVP for P2P consumer technologies, leveraged NLP, leveraged NLP best practices to parse terabytes of data. This is a big meaty meatball. You are really digging into multiple points in two lines on one project. So be careful. Once again, we already had a meaty line in the last experience, but this is a great example of being able to speak on the volume of data that you were able to accomplish, but is also how you were able to leverage leadership in changing a specific metric. Let's look below. Developed a novel approach to A-B testing across international user base at CEO's advice and guidance. Hey, you work directly with the CEO? 
that's good on you. And you were able to work across offices. Now that means that you were able to cross a lot of red tape that a lot of companies would have to mostly deal with. Along with the core iOS development team pushed and data ingestion pipeline into production, delivering to CMO a collection of user case personas for targeted advertising. Wow, you were working with the entire C-suite. So this experience would be incredible to speak of. It sounds to me like this was maybe a 10 person, 50 person startup max. So you were able to work directly with these people instead of working in your small isolated niche. That means that you are a go-getter and that means that's a great look for any resume. Let's look at the very last experience. And a lot of you would probably relate to this if you're a student or you're coming from, an, uh, uh, coming from a, a variety of experiences that include internships. This is a business analyst intern position. In positions like these, you wanna focus on learning, collaboration, and overcoming a novel challenge for your internship positions. So novel means new, novel means exciting and creative. How are we able to leverage the fact that you had a less technical role here and bring that to your advantage. Let's see a couple of examples. Designed a, designed a universal ontology library in Python and Keras for enterprise NLG engine. Hey, that sounds familiar. And this is actually a really good thing you can bring up in resumes in talking about what is a ontological library. Wow, that's something that you will be able to draw the attention and curiosity of recruiters as well as speaking to your high level of theory and industry experience in machine learning. Finally, you look at the last line in their experience section and we see presented from C to CPO and CTO how NLP concept matching could improve user efficiency by 50%. Amazing. You again talked about a novel experience, something that it was very creative and self-driven by you and the metric in which you were able to drive. I'll let data professor jump in with any questions he might have right now. So typically I would receive a couple of emails every year from students asking to do research internship in my research lab. And so some of the things that I find particularly standing out are the mission statement. So if the student can clearly show how he or she could contribute to our research lab by going through what our research lab is working on. And so that shows me that the person has prepared themselves very well in that they're taking the time to figure out what I am doing and then trying to add value to the lab. And so that is particularly impressive. Last section, skills and interests. You see that we have our technical, we have Python, and we are making very close care that we are not just listing random machine learning methods. This is a dead giveaway for a fake machine learning engineer or a fake data scientist. Just by putting down statistical methods and models, that doesn't mean that you should put it onto your resume. So that's a tip number one. And I'm actually going to open up an entire uh, video playlist of videos in the near future about what not to do to get your resume flagged as a fake data scientist. I've already created a video about fake data scientists on my channel already, so go check that out if you're curious about what constitutes a fake data scientist. Right below, I put languages because that can come really handy when you are communicating. Remember, a data scientist is a communicator, so you want to make sure that you are able to speak to your business proficient languages. Finally, a statistics section is not necessary, but this is going to be able to tell people a little bit of your bread and butter in terms of how you parse data. Finally, interests. I cannot stress enough how important interests are. So here we talk about blockchain, Kaggle competition, civic technology, community volunteering, and Black Mirror. Wait, the TV show? Yes, the TV show. You want to be able to show that you're not just a piece of paper. You're actually a person that enjoys Netflix and, and chilling and Hulu and and booing and, and whatever it is that you want to show as part of your third dimensional personality, that is the kicker to any great resume. And now you might be asking, that resume is great and all, but where do I drop it? Like what kind of portals and job sites actually work as a resume drop? And how do I stand out among thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of resumes out there? Well, Data Professor, if you have me on next time, I will be happy to talk about my personal takes on secret ways you can get your resume shown to the right people now that you have the right resume.
Once again, if you want your hands on this document, go ahead and head on over to my channel where I have two whole videos explaining how to get your hands on a document. Only the first 200 people will be able to get their hands on this Word doc. And while you're there, think about subscribing. I make weekly content. Right now I'm up to three videos a week and this is actually gonna be a four video a week kind of week. So if you like consistent content that explains complex concepts with comedy and corgis, please head over to my channel. I think you'll like it there. Please take a second to subscribe to Data Professor if you're just here checking out the good resume, lurking, you know, being a looky-loo, that's okay. But you should do your part and subscribe. Like this video if you liked it, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. So I hope that this video was helpful to you in planning for your own data science job application process. And make sure to subscribe to Data Leap's YouTube channel for more awesome tips and tricks. And if you're finding value in this video, please hit on the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet done so, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.